What up Racer, it's your own here and welcome back to FRL round number 11 already and we're here at Paul Ricard as we already see a car glitching right at the start of my qualifying lap and we're here for Paul Ricard and it's a track I kind of do enjoy driving it doesn't look very well it's not visually pleasing but I do enjoy driving this track so we'll see what we can do today didn't practice particularly for this race so we're just freestyling as well most of the races here and if you did not see the previous race around Japan I would highly recommend you go check this one out especially the last qualifying lap that was crazy and you have the standings on the screen now. Namsko will actually be back for this race after starting not starting five races and after him the top 10 is actually quite close together which includes myself, so we'll see what I can do today. Currently we're looking at my best qualifying lap, and it's actually quite an average lap. Um, I think sector 1 was actually pretty good, but then there were quite a couple of mistakes in this lap. A couple of missed apexes, and perhaps the commitment wasn't quite there. And actually it really doesn't matter if I will qualify on the soft compound, because there will be rain at the start of the race so it's just put in your best lap in get up as high as possible and go from there basically so final corner take it absolutely horrendously very weird line running too deep as well then oversteer on the traction and yeah it just wasn't a great lap and in the end i do improve my time but i stay in p8 and that's also where i end up at the end of the qualifying session so, Yogurt on pole, then Kyle with a really good, really good lap for his standards in second place. And yeah, we'll see what we are able to do in this race. So, after the reconnaissance lap, we're on the grid now. And you can see full wets to start off, then it will go to intermediate conditions. And the track should be dry by the end of the race. So, if this setting is not exciting, then I don't know what is. We all haven't practiced in these conditions, so I'm adjusting a couple of things on my setup for this race. And let's go, basically. So, we have five red lights, and be careful when it's pedal to the metal. And here we go, get good traction relative to Zach. And also think a little bit of a better start than Terror, then a little oversteer moment. But then, on the right-hand side, FRL Ginger coming through. And we're side-by-side side going into turns one and two. Holding it around the outside here. Terror with a little wiggle on the back end. Getting quite close to his gearbox. And nobody exactly knows where the braking points are. So we're taking it conservatively this lap. As I'm still side by side with Ginger. But then he's just a bit too far ahead. And I have to back out. And then I get a massive snap of oversteer on that curb. I think it was actually um, the curb that unbalanced my car there. Not so much my throttle application. But I stay in 8th place, gained 1 position and lost 1 position. And, well, everyone was just getting a bit of a feel for the track conditions at this stage. And you can see they're a little bit too eager on the throttle and getting a little snap. Um, yeah, I think we were all just trying to find our bearings here at the opening laps. No major incidents in front. Well, I say that. If you watched very, very carefully at the start, you could see three people jumped the start. The top three jumped the start and they all got a drive through. So essentially we're in a net P5 right now, or well, one of them already pitted here under the first lap or served this drive through. So we're now in P7, but it's a net P5 at this stage. So essentially we all gained three positions at the start here. Then end of lap three, these last couple of corners were absolutely horrendous in the wet conditions I think I may have compromised my setup a little bit too much it's essentially sort of a mixture between a wet and a dry setup with now Ephra Robin quite behind then another corner I was struggling with was turn one running too deep here and that's a free pass for Ephra Robin and same can be said for Zach basically because for good measure I got another oversteer moment on the exit there due to my well, weird line into turns one and two. So I lost two positions there, which is of course not very optimal. And well, we're back down to a net P7 at this stage. And 
I wanted to make sure I did not lose any more positions. So the good thing about wet weather driving is that you can just basically spam your ERS down the straight and well due to not having any DRS or anything it's often a lot easier to stay ahead of the cars behind you so let's try and do that and as you can see Efro run behind got a bit better of an exit but just using the overtake wisely here and it's enough to stay ahead then this fast right hander that's also a corner where I was struggling with or maybe not necessarily struggling but more finding confidence I guess to carry a lot of speed there and you can see Zach in front and then for this left hander I mess up my braking point and that means that also Evero Ron gets a free pass so I was struggling in these conditions I was not having fun and I was hoping things would get better later on in the race as you can see end of lap 4 Zach already coming into the pit lane and I thought this was very very early I didn't expect the track to be dry enough yet for intermediate conditions it still felt like full wets Still, full wets seem to be the fastest tire now, according to Jeff. So, at this stage, I was trusting him. But then, you can see also FRL Terror Racer into the pit lane. And he also switches to intermediates already. So, we'll see what happens. As I now have championship leader still, Namsko, right behind me. And you can probably see my confidence wasn't the best at this stage. Because, well, three cars have overtaken me in this first stint already that's not very optimal so I wasn't gonna fight this extremely hard but of course for the confidence it would be good if I could keep my teammates behind for a little bit longer as also my teammates now in the pit lane probably switching to intermediates as well and I can say the intermediate runners were catching a lot at this point Zach was basically right behind Terror when he came out of the pit lane and you can now see FRL Ron has lost it and I'm not sure what FRL Robin has done but he has also DNF'd out of this race so that's two more drivers out of the race and of course now is the time for everyone to switch onto the intermediate tires and really unlucky for Zach and Terror Racer because they would have undercut us by well I don't know like four seconds or something it was crazy I really was not expecting the track to be dry enough for intermediates at that point and also because um, Jeff wasn't saying anything about intermediates being better I didn't expect it to be that early for a switch over point then heading onto the restart it's now Sylvan in the lead who started in P4 but essentially got promoted up to P1 after everyone got a drive through in front of him then it's Shilu in the McLaren then it's myself and got quite a good restart here and once again turn one and this time I actually thought I was breaking too late but I actually braked at the right point and Chilu was a little bit early and then behind it is Terror Racer and Zack who still gained a few positions but they would have gained even more without the safety car being deployed so still quite treacherous conditions but it's not full wet anymore so the grip was coming back a little bit and I think I enjoyed these conditions a bit more. I think my car was the best suited for these intermediate conditions and unfortunately I wasn't quite able to keep up with Sylvan, he was just too fast. Then I was a little bit slower than Chiyalu but I was a little bit faster than Terror Racer and Ginger behind actually had really good pace who is now also about to overtake Terror Racer for P4 in the race. He also overtook Zack on well, somewhere between lap 8 and lap 11. And yeah, I think my car was better suited to these conditions. In these conditions, I felt most comfortable for the whole race. But then, unfortunately, due to my warning on lap 1 there, which was a bit BS in my opinion, because I couldn't quite see where I was going, and I don't think I even went off track. But it is how it is, and I'm on a 3 seconds, and the same can be said for Ginger. As now Krein retires after a chicane on the back straight and it is another safety car because he probably put it into the wall on the left hand side. So at this stage wasn't quite sure what I was going to do having a quick little check 
of my tire wear, asking for the weather report. And I think my tires were like at 15 to 20 percent wear at this stage. So I decided to stay out. Nemsko and Jeroen have different ideas, and they're both boxing. So yeah, of course intermediates are still the fastest tire at this point. So we're getting to the point where safety car will come in again. And Sylvan was taking this really, really slowly. Um, which is fair, he can do that. Then on the left hand side, I wasn't sure what was happening here. You can see a Red Bull passing and I'm pretty sure Yogurt actually retired from the session because, well, I think he got another five second time penalty for someone hitting him or himself hitting someone and retiring on track is still not allowed so I'm a little bit annoyed with this guy I mean he's been doing a lot of weird stuff really and it's getting to my nerves a little bit but let's just focus on the race rather than some idiots retiring from the race um, once again I got a very good restart relative to Chi Lu I think I was better at getting my tires up to temperature at the restart and that was basically the only point where I could get ahead of Chilu. I knew that because his pace was better than mine. And sort of the same scenario has unfolded as before the safety car. Sylvan just pulling away again. Then I'm sort of equal pace with Chilu. Maybe he's a little bit faster. Then Ginger who is a lot faster than both of us. And once again we're dropping Terror more than a second and a half behind. But now, we've got quite a poor exit out of the chicane after back straight. And Ginger is having a little look around my outside. And it's contact. And somehow, for wheel to wheel contact, I actually get wing damage. And um, this sort of unraveled the race, of course. Because now, well, I have wing damage. And we have to wait up until the track gets dry in again to go to slicks. So. This was completely my fault, like, I probably should have just cut off the line anyways, because I definitely had the corner, and then I sort of over- or understeered into him, and in my opinion that shouldn't have warranted wing damage, but I guess it did, it was quite a hefty contact, but still, it was wheel to wheel, and I don't think my front wing got involved. Then, I was just creating my own train here, and I was fighting really really hard for this position, and in two laps time, Terror hasn't managed to overtake me. So, I'm quite proud of myself for just keeping them behind for so long. You can see Chi, Lu and Ginger have a pull away six seconds already. And you can see a little bit of sun coming through. A little bit of a dry line forming. So, I thought, well, I have wing damage anyway. I'll have to wait up for like ten more seconds in the pit lane anyways. And let's just take a gamble. Because, well, I could have kept defending for another lap. But... I don't think that would have been exactly the greatest strategy ever. So decided to get a new wing on. Which of course cost me a couple of seconds. And Jeroen who was in the pack behind me. I think somewhere in like. Should it be P6, P7 or something. Decided to also come into the pit lane at the same time with me. For the slicks. So. Jeroen and Jeroen are braving it out on the slick tires. And in this final sector. I was gaining so much time. The first two sectors I think I maybe lost like a second. But now the final sector. Track dried up significantly. And you can see. I'm still ahead of 3XL and Kyle. Even though I had to wait up for like 7 more seconds. To get my wing changed. And I'm coming out right behind Zach again. So. It's actually not too bad. Terror only 5 seconds ahead. So this undercut had worked but of course due to the wing damage I've fallen back quite a couple of places then lap 23 and just for fun we have another safety car um, I'm not sure what happened who retired but it is another safety car and safety cars coming in so we have two more laps of racing so once again like we've seen so many times in F121 league racing when the safety car is on it results in a two or three lap sprint towards the end of the race. So everyone can basically spam their ERS for these laps. And let's just go basically. Um, 3XL behind with 9 seconds. Then Namsko on a 3 seconds in front of me 
Zach's on 3 seconds and myself I'm on 6 seconds but at this stage I do have all well, 6 warnings in total and I felt like I could maybe get my first warning removed which was a little bit BS and let's actually switch back to the action now as during these two laps Terror and Zach will have a really good battle and you can see Zach's actually going for a switch back here through this fast right hander then he has the inside for this long right hander and they're both giving each other just enough space and I was looking to get involved as well so I had a little look down the inside just to scare them off a little bit maybe then try to get a wider line but I couldn't really get traction down in a significant way of course my tires are one lap older out of those that had me then having a little look down the inside here maybe to try and put Zach offline but it seemed he was not affected by my half-hearted move at all and in the end I think I only lost time by trying to do that then down the Mistral straight you can see Terror having to defend the inside from Zach and Zach's trying to get a switch back on here for the second part of the Mistral straight and I think he gets a better exit so I'm gonna spam my ERS as well try and see if I can maybe gain something here Zach having a little look down the inside they make contact Zach's quite slow and I should have sent it down the inside there but I was a bit too hesitant then going through the right hander Will they go side by side once more? Zach having a little look. Then I was trying to set up an exit here, but I ran too wide. Then Zach's completely off. He lost it on the traction, so that's one free position for me at least. But of course, I still have this. I do still have this six second time penalty. So I won't finish in P6 here. Of course, 3XL has even more time penalties, so I will stay out of him. But then Namsko will jump me and Kyle will jump me because they both have three seconds. And in the end, only ten drivers made the finish. And it's P8 for me. It is what it is and it was quite a hectic race. I think I messed up a little bit by getting wing damage there. I should have just closed the door on Ginger in that fast right hander. And yeah, just my own fault for getting wing damage. There was more in this race but overall it was quite good fun. Changeable conditions are always fun. I think the intermediates were best suited to my car, to my setup. And I just overcompensated a bit on the setup. So it was a bit too understeery in the wet and in the dry. Anyways, it's Baku next in this league. So that will undoubtedly provide chaos. And if you did enjoy the video, a like is always appreciated. And I'll see you for Baku. Bye bye.